Hello, welcome to this session. Today we would be understanding the various perspectives that we discuss in human geography. Now this section has been demanded by a lot of students. The only reason being the approaches have been a set of theoretical section where most of the students get struck up. Now to begin with, let's understand the two perspectives in geography. In geography, we broadly classify the field uh, study into two divisions that is the physical geography and the human geography. As the word suggests, the physical geography deals with the structure of the earth, the landforms, the mountains, the rivers, the oceans, while on the other hand, human geography deals with interaction of human beings with the environment. So when I say interaction of human beings with the environment, to understand human geography, there has been a huge set of debate that has been going on since years. As a part of this debate, there were evolutions from environmental, uh, environmentalism, determinism, possibilism, radical approach, welfare approach, uh, quantitative revolution and all these have been part of uh, human geographical perspectives which are trying to explain why and how human beings interact with their surroundings. Now, in today's lecture, what we would be discussing is one of the very recent approaches, which is known as the welfare approach. The welfare approach aims at two things. First is equality and next is social justice. Now, the propounders of welfare approach focused on the fact that if human beings are not considered at equality or at par, it's very difficult for an environment to sustain itself. So the focus of welfare approach, as I said, was focusing on inequality, removing out inequalities and maintaining a social justice. And this theory was against the quantitative revolution that took place. So what was the basic aim? The basic aim was the issues like poverty, hunger, crime, racial discrimination, providing equal access to public services. So these are some of the issues that have been addressed under the field of welfare approach. So homelessness is another issue that we can cover under social issues, providing medical facilities to all and everyone would be another kind of social issue that we would be addressing. Now why these and how these social issues got addressed? So there is a very simple way to understand this. I can say this diagram will help you with this. So who includes the population and the people and we will be focusing on three things here. Who gets how who gets what and who gets where? What does that mean? Who means the population here that we are talking about? Now, how does this population get things? So, we would be talking about the accessibility. What do they get? So, we would be talking about the uh, amenities, the level of human satisfaction. And finally, you have where. Where implies which part of the region or the place of residence, I could say. So to decide or to govern any welfare approach, what is important is you have a set of people. Now these people should get what they are looking for. Okay. So what is the level of satisfaction these people have? Where do these people live? Some of these might be situated in big bungalows. Another might be on roadside. So where these people are located, based on that you aim to provide equality. And how do you approach a person who is living on a roadside and provide 
equal amenities to do, to them as compared to a person who is living in a bungalow so that was the aim of this welfare approach now under this welfare approach there were two approaches that have been most commonly discussed first is the descriptive approach and second is the process oriented approach now we'll be covering these one by one so first is the descriptive approach what does the descriptive approach indicate descriptive in approach indicates exactly what we have discussed now who gets how what and where so this approach directly talks about uh, the social inequality and how to rule out that inequality and provide social justice to all on the other hand you have a second approach in welfare geography that is known as a process oriented approach now process oriented approach focuses on how this inequality arose so how this inequality existed in a society so this approach or a process oriented approach not only focuses on uh, the people who are living in slums on the other hand people who are rich and if i could say i want to maintain a seesaw balance and i have poor on one side and rich on another side the descriptive approach will say these are the segment of poor and this is the section of rich and what we are trying to understand is how much facilities and what these are getting in contrast to uh, the rich while the process oriented approach talks about why this richer segment is getting richer and this poor segment is getting poorer further so it is why and how the inequality has arose in the society rather than just explaining the inequality per se so these are the two approaches that have been thoroughly been a part of the welfare approach now the most and the foremost thing that we would try to understand is how the welfare economics works or how do we talk about the welfare or the social well being so if i say well being i can say well being is a function of s1 s2 s3 till sn that means where s is the level of living and well being and n are the subdivisions of the various segments of the society similarly this s is a function of x1 to xm where x is the quality of the goods and the bads consumed or experienced that is each person how good or how bad it is and what good or bad things he is consuming based on that you try to indicate the social well being or there is another parameter where you say it's a level of well being or satisfaction that an individual or a group of society has now the most important thing here to understand is the pareto optimality now pareto was a leading economist and what he tried to explain was the concept of equality his concept of equality i could say was similar to a production possibility curve that we usually talk about in economics and he said if there are two persons a and b okay it is impossible to make a person better off i can simply write that as it is impossible to make a person better off without making another person worse off that means if i want to improve the socio economic condition of this person someone on this line has to compromise that and when when someone on this line compromises that then only this person can become better off so if there is a chance to make any person better off it would always and always be at the expense of some other person so if there are two persons i could say on a line a and b and this is poor this is rich this can become rich only if this person gets slightly poor that is the basic 
condition or the basic thing that Pareto talked about. And based on this, he tried to explain that's the only and only way you can maintain equilibrium in the society or remove the inequalities and maintain social justice. Now, how this branch evolved is an interesting thing. So, let's understand the process of evolution of welfare approach. So, let's consider this to be the main route for human geographical branches to evolve. What happened in 1960s, welfare approach was considered the part of radical approach and this radical approach focused on quantitative analysis, it focused on positivism, but slowly and gradually people from radical approach tried to segregate them as a separate branch in around 1970s where they called it as welfare approach and this segment of welfare approach kind of opposed the quantitative ideas that were propounded here. So this welfare approach tried to focus on the social issues as we have previously mentioned like crime, poverty, equality, providing equal access to public facilities. Now this welfare approach kind of break down, broke down into two segments. One was the early approach and another was the recent approach. The early approach was kind of descriptive approach I could say as we have discussed or talked about previously. So who gets what, where and how was the focus of the early approach and this early approach focused on kind of multivariate analysis. On the other hand, the recent approach focused on a process oriented approach or it was a kind of equitability in terms of distribution of resources. So equitable distribution of resources became the aim of the recent ideas under welfare approach. Now there were lot of people who have worked in terms of welfare approach. I would just jot down few of those. First is Smith and Knox. In around 1973, they talked about social well-being of United States. Under this, they strictly and strictly said that GNP or national income is not an indicator of quality of life. Rather, the social justice or the social parameters will become the indicators of the quality of life. The next was Harris. Harris did the predictive model to understand the criminal behavior or uh, the criminal behavior of the uh, criminals and they try to understand how this is being affected and how they can help the police. The next model talked about understanding uh, the importance of medical issues under the uh, setup that could provide public access to each and every individual. This was done by Shannon and Davis. So these were some of the names who have worked out in the field of welfare approach. We would be covering more topics on the perspectives of human geography in the further session. You can subscribe to Exam Race channel for any further updates. Stay tuned. Have a good day ahead.